as I am talking to you right now, there is an attempt for Ruto and the writer to have a dialogue. You know, no president wants to see this kind of situation. No president wants demonstrations whatsoever. No president wants to see citizens protesting against him or his government. Therefore, he will either use the police to brutalize the protesters, the citizens, so that they can fear and stop demonstrations. Or he can decide to engage, to have a dialogue, a conversation with opposition leaders so that to find a solution to the problem and stop demonstrations. In a vibrant democracy like ours, using the police, the security, to stop demonstrations always doesn't yield favorable results. So the president would prefer a dialogue, a conversation, to find a solution and a stop demonstrations. This kind of pictures doesn't portray Kenya in a good way. You know, international media likes this kind of pictures to portray Africa in a negative way. So no president will want these kind of pictures to be shown outside there. Moreover, even if Ruto has legal legitimacy, it's looking for political legitimacy. It's looking for a way, you know, it can be accepted across, you know, across the political divide as the president of Kenya. And for him, actually, he would prefer, he would want to have a dialogue with the right Odinga. Because he wants a peaceful environment to govern people. He doesn't want these kind of pictures to be portrayed outside there because they will scare the investors. And again, this is not a favorable condition for economical growth. You know, Ruto is an experienced politician. And he knows very well. If there is a dialogue between him and the Rairo Dinga, not necessarily a handshake, the, the political temperatures will go down. And that's what Ruto wants. So there is an attempt to have a dialogue between Ruto and the Rairo Dinga. But this attempt is being frustrated by some people in the government, who doesn't want this dialogue or conversation to happen because they know that if there is a dialogue between Rairo Dinga and the president, then it means they won't have an enemy to fight. And the person who doesn't want that handshake to happen is the deputy president Rigathi Gachao. We ata ukipiga kelele mambo ya hardship akuna. Na ata ukijaribu kuletewa mulango ya nyuma kwa rais mimi niko pale kwa hiyo compound nasunguka hapo. Hakuna. Wewe ukae huko tukupatie kiti ukasana na sisi. But why? The deputy president, Rigati Gachawa, doesn't want Rairo Denga and the president to shake hands, to have a dialogue. Rigati Gachawa knows very well that his political enemy is Rairo Denga. And he knows that if there is a dialogue or a handshake in quotes between Rairo Denga 
and President Ruto, then his political enemy will not be there. Because you realize that some politicians, including the deputy president, Rigadi Gachawa, thrive. Their political careers have thrived because of Raido Denga. So if there is a dialogue, a handshake, a conversation between these two people, then the political enemy will be eliminated. And these people won't have anybody to fight. Because Raido Denga is keeping them busy. And for this reason, Rigadi Gachawa doesn't want the president and the Raido Denga to shake hands. Because he knows there is a possibility. And he's trying so much. Because he knows there is a possibility. Sasa kazi yake ni kukabali state house. Mirango yote kwa kikisha kwa mba raira haingi. Because raira ya kingia. My friend, some people won't have work to do. Because some people want the raira to exist, to be there, so that actually they can be relevant. If raira odinga retires from politics, Oh, there is a dialogue between him and the president. There are people who will go mute, who will be relevant, including the deputy president, Rikati Gachawa. Because 90% of Rikati Gachawa's politics is about Rai Rodinga. And you can imagine a situation whereby Rai Rodinga is not there. But now, because Ruto is the president right now, because he has achieved what he wanted, because, you know, you remember when Rair Odinga came in between Ruto and Uhuru, you know, Ruto felt uncomfortable. He felt mm -hmm. that he has been shortchanged. Now that he is the president, he will want to have Rair Odinga on his side because he wants to govern peacefully. He doesn't want someone, you know, giving him problems. And I think in the near future, he will do everything to make sure Kwamba Rairo Dinga, you know, is kind of contained. And um, that won't be good because we won't have an opposition. But, you know, Ruto is very smart. He knows how to accommodate people. And you can see... Ruto wanted to introduce an idea whereby he wanted, you know, uh, the opposition leader, Rai Rodinga, to have an office, you know, to have even a salary. He wanted, he wanted the law to be changed to accommodate Rai Rodinga. And, that's, and, and that, that was one way of Ruto trying to massage. I don't know how that thing went, but it's like kind Raira was not very interested. But Ruto will try so much to have Raira Denga on his side. Or to reduce this kind of uh, aggress aggressiveness that Raira has. But in one way or the other, no president wants demonstrations. No president wants to see people protesting. The president wants, you know, that tranquility in the country so that actually he can be able to govern. And um, for Rigadi Gachawa, let him pray so much that the dialogue between President Ruto and Rai Rodinga doesn't take place. But because if it takes place, it would be irrelevant. You won't have anything to, to, to talk about. See you. Thank you so much.